Yeah. Yeah, what's up? What's up, dude? Hey, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Normal World. I am Dave Landau. And I'm Quarter Black Garrett. I like how they have it spaced out so I, I can read it correctly. Oh, I, I looked over there. I have to focus on looking in one place. I look oh. all over because I have ADD. Yeah, we got notes. It's okay. Well, I mean, maybe I'd have ADD. I mean, I just look I at stuff. I you notes. Thank you for the notes. Yeah. <laughs> I got yeah, I got some real interesting notes. <laughs> a lot of Dave, how was your weekend? It was amazing. What'd you do? Um, I performed at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle in Detroit, my hometown. All right. Awesome crowds, good people. A guy gave me quite a compliment. He said, uh, last time I saw you brought a girl. She didn't like you, but we had a threesome and she liked the threesome. <laughs> I said, Thank you. Hey uh, man. Nice. At least you're involved. Ever said to me. And of course, we have Angela. I did it. Thanks. <laughs> How was your weekend? It was great, dude. Uh, I had to uh, deal with pink eye the whole time. I saw. Yeah. After the show, uh, I'm pretty sure because I touched both eyes, I, I got into that. Both of them went shut, sealed. But I think I'm better now. Much better now. I feel uh, recovered. Yeah, I don't like. I don't like that. Well, I, I farted on all of your pillows, so you can oh. join the club. Well, good. I've been napping on them. Okay. I can't wait for tomorrow to have itchy eyes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and today we are joined by a comedian and the host of the Back Row Podcast. Please welcome Jamie Kilstein. Hi, friends. How are you, sir? Thank you for oh, coming man. on. I'm still getting over that threesome guy from your show. <laughs> Honest compliment. <laughs> so, wait, hold on. So, last time, I just want to make sure I have the chronology of this right. Last time he saw you, brought a girl, the girl didn't like you. Correct. But he still had a threesome that night with that girl? Yes. Interesting. And she liked the threesome. Did okay, you pick she... up another girl at your show? Uh, might have. Wheel it cake? might have been in the bathroom equally hating me. It could, or it was like a BDSM kind of like self-hate thing where she loved you and the other one hated you so much that it was uh, kind of like a uh, like a punishment kind of ordeal. It could have been. Yeah. Where she's just quoting your jokes back and she's like, I'm so bad. Yeah. I, hate just, yeah, I hate it so much. I feel like a, th a threesome that night person was probably very drunk. Yep. Yeah. And definitely just not focusing or paying attention or caring about my portion of the evening. Because <laughs> he said they hated the show, so I assume it was Matt and me. Okay. And yeah, the whole show didn't enjoy it. And what about Matt? How did he, how did she feel about Matt? I think she hated all of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but I mean, she wasn't into no. it. She wanted, you know, she was into a lot of things. It's comedy all, wasn't one of them that, that night. Not comedy. That uh, it's always so awkward after stand-up shows where one of the part, like the, either the boyfriend or the girlfriend, clearly likes you, and the other one's just standing ten feet away by the exit, refusing to make eye contact, and you don't want to start a fight. And you don't know if you acknowledge them. It's weird when it's the woman. I know. And I actually prefer that, though, by a, by a lot. Yes. But it's just when it's the woman and the guy standing there like he's going to hurt you, <laughs> like you hit on her or something. Uh, it's I, your fault. Yeah, this or like, she'll, like sometimes a girl put her arm around me for a picture and I'll be like, easy, Dave. And I'm like, I'm literally not doing it. I'm taking a picture. Right. <laughs> Bro. Like, I don't, don't do the hover. That's Keanu Reeves' style. Yeah. He does the hover, never touches. Yeah, the, that's, get accused. That's, that's good. I feel like I'm just not famous enough. To, it's just rude if I did that. And I'm also, like, really, Dave? I'm also 5'6", okay. if I'm just like, ew. <laughs> the idea of you doing the hover and the girl being like, who the fuck do you think you are? Yeah, exactly. Touch me. Like, yeah. Come on. Go ahead. Oh, what? I'm going to, yeah. Right. <laughs> I couldn't get out of this situation. Please. <laughs> I'm going to go have a threesome without you. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> They're going to give you a review on Yelp. No. Ugh. Didn't like it. Well, before we get started, please like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. It really does help us out. Yeah, give us some uh, some notes, like I gave Dave notes. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Just, just subscribe to the channel. <laughs> just, give, just give us notes. That's fine. Like orangutans are not are monkeys not or chimps or gorillas. They're all different, separate species. Uh, species. We had a long you say it. You can give me a note on that. YouTube comments are fun. Yeah, they are. They're I fun. I really like them. Well, they're filled with niceties. Right. <laughs> and just people who have a great life and everything put together and their marriage isn't falling apart. And then they leave constructive criticism on YouTube. That always is helpful. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. I was like, you should go to hell. <laughs> Thanks. I was trying to give you constructive criticism. <laughs> I just oh, say thank you. I don't know what that you. means. That's oh, my favorite. Oh, comedian you. can't take a joke. I'm like, I think you just threatened me and my family. <laughs> There's no punchline. It's not even funny. Yeah, the rule of three was three threats towards What's me. That? That's hurtful, bro. I don't like it. <laughs> I'm cool. kill you and everyone you love. I'm like, I'm not, just the punchline's not there. Oh, snowflake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speak so... Neo. Yeah. This week got canceled, then uncanceled. 
I have to be honest. I didn't, and I had no idea who Neo was. You don't know who Neo was? I did not know okay. who Neo was. Neo was a big thing in like 2005. I okay. I remember. I just well, can't stop. That's what oh, I was going to ask you. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, I know who he is. Yeah, it's like Six Flags. That was all I listened to at Six Flags. I was like pumping in the freaking. That sounds like the worst day of my life. <laughs> Was that an Usher? <laughs> like, that like, you're like, sure, Usher. Usher. I, I, also I went to the worst theme park <laughs> and heard mediocre music. What a good... Hey, <laughs> Neo's my boy. Come I, on. I briefly sorry. thought Excellent you... Ex- I mean, not mediocre Stop music. It. You're still, though, listening to the same song That's on true. a loop on a ride. Doesn't matter. I, 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 I misunderstood that twice. First, I thought Neo was in like a Great Adventure commercial, and I was like, that makes sense for the time. Possibly. Then I thought you meant you just went to Great Adventure, and that's all you listened to? Like, you brought your Walkman, and you're like, <laughs> You know, Another like, day with Neo. Neo on the Batman ride. That's all you did. Neo. I just can't. <laughs> no. It was in the line. You had to wait in the line, and they're just playing the music over and over. But anyways, Neo. It's when they had oh. the Neo ride. Yeah, the Neo ride. <laughs> it's when it's... It, you go it, backwards on that ride. Yeah, it's like a small world, and you go through, and it's just like you get, you yell at gender... <laughs> you yell little... at trans kids. Like, like, it's... <laughs> You're all gross. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, I didn't watch this clip until way later, until right before the show, but... <laughs> He uh, apparently just expressed some views that he had on a podcast when he's being interviewed about child transitioning and just saying, like, it didn't make any sense. Do we have a clip for that? Parents have almost almost forgotten what the role of a parent is. Amen. It's like, OK, lost control. if your little boy comes to you and says, Daddy, I want to be a girl. And you just let him rock with that. You just let. Right. He's five. Right. And where did he get that if from? If you let this five-year-old boy decide to eat candy all day, he's going to do that. Exactly. Like, when, when did it become a good idea to let a five-year-old, let a six-year-old, let a 12-year-old make a life-changing decision for themselves? Right. When did that happen? Right. Like, I don't, I don't understand that. I, I, just, I don't get that. Don't and get to that. medicate these young kids that are five, six, growing up and knowing that it, it affects their brain, it affects their organs, it mm-hmm. makes them sick, but they're not allowed to do drugs, they're not allowed to do alcohol. Right. We can medicate he them. He can't up. drive a car yet, but he can decide his sex. Right, oh, right. what sex orientation, and he can cut off his pee-pee, and, and that, to me, that makes no sense whatsoever. Is, uh, don't cut off the pee-pee. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, that's a pretty extremist viewpoint right there. Uh, <laughs> Clearly a neo-Nazi. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <That's okay>. Nice. <laughs> well played. Yeah. High five. Get one every once in a while. Well no played, old friend. <laughs> yeah, she did say cut up his pee pee. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a good conversation. <laughs> I love the idea of someone about to interview 2000s R and B star Neo and was like, I'm gonna ask him about transgender people. This is the two <laughs> things. Yeah. This is what Neo fans need to know. What do you I, think about a young boy sawing his genitals off? <laughs> Your thoughts, Neo? I think it's great. I just wanted to plug my new single. Yes. I think they should stop. I mean, I think great adventure. Those were pretty typical responses from an adult that has cognitive abilities. And it's like, hey, maybe we shouldn't do that for little kids. They should wait. I don't. I don't want to get. I don't want to get all serious. But this was. So when this is so when the story was uh, pitched that we were going to talk about this today. Yeah. Um. I did, I did what all comedians do, which is I did zero research on it whatsoever. And I automatically sort of assumed, I was like, okay, what am I going to say if Neo gets up there and is like, we need to like arrest trans kids and blah, 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 oh, blah. Yeah, yeah. Because that was sort of like my, like when I was super on the left, you would just hear Neo says something about trans kids and just take to Twitter without watching the video right. and just be like, this guy hates trans kids. The reason trans people are committing suicide is because of Neo, blah, blah, blah. I think what he said can still be like, can still run parallel with also trans people should be able to live their lives, blah, 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 blah. It, it's so different to say a five year old should not mm-hmm. make a decision that will change their life, right? Like, I still regret my ponytail from my jam band high school era, but I could like do that. cut I don't it off. It. What, don't <laughs> regret that, bro. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, but like, what he said wasn't hateful. It wasn't, we need to stop trans people. It had nothing to do with, I don't know what he said after that, but like talking about protecting kids is far different than like a five-year-old who doesn't know. Yeah. It's far different from transphobia or being like, they're all going to go to hell or, you know, whatever, which I don't believe in any of that stuff. I'm like, mm-hmm. go, go do your thing. But when children are involved is when I think that's adults the difference. can step in. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's a hateful well, thing he said. Yeah. You just don't let your kid do anything. And the reality is, is they want to put this out there and blame him because now it's not really a target anymore. It's like you have rights. 
You have yes. the same rights. It's fine. So what do you do? Now it's, oh, kids. Now it's getting an opinion on that and you're going after children. There's no... It's not even so much them going after children. It's just the press. Right. It's using yeah. that to say, like, well, of course a kid shouldn't transition. And in California, when you have the kid who, like, they'll arrest the parents at the doctor's office if they don't agree with the child. Yeah. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire— It's like, this is a—it's a five-year-old. Like you said, if you want any candy all day, if you let a kid pick dinner right. yeah. for, like, five days in a row, I, I, you'll I, die. He would it's die. It's like, I'm a dinosaur. And be like, well, I have to affirm that. He's I mean, a raptor. Yeah. I, I you pulled may... part of his spine out and made a tail <laughs> you made, made a belt he's in a wheelchair such a good point that i don't think enough people talk about which is like all my gay and trans friends in austin um in austin in austin yeah yeah that's where <laughs> they all live um not. are like very chill like none of them are trying to like groom your kids um they're just like doing their thing I think, I think that that's most. most I think of, that's most of them. So do I, dude. I think most of these stories and most of these things being floated are by just like straight white guilt liberals who it, it, it's not that trans people want to groom your kids. It's that white straight liberals are stupid. Like, yeah, that's what's happening. Yeah. And they're they're overplaying their hand and they're trying to be like they're overplaying it. We feel so bad about ourselves that we're going to go and bat for people that aren't even doing that. They're like, Hey, we just want to live our lives. I thought that was the message in the, in the nineties and the two thousands. When I grew up, that was the message was we want to live our lives. We want to be our own thing. Yep. Well, I mean, there wasn't all this whole LGBT QRA to double day X. There was just LGB. Yeah. And it was, we just want to live our thing, our life. Don't bother us. And then it turned into this other thing. Once they got to the point where society was like, yeah, okay, do what you want. Yeah. Well, everybody and then it went wants way far the other way. It's that everybody wants you to champion a cause, and now the causes are getting to the point that you're like, well, no, I'm not going to let a five year old pick that. Right. And it's ridiculous. It, in reality, it's it's a non conversation because who really believes it? And then we, he, of course, you know, he backpedaled on this issue uh, with an apology on Twitter, or at least so we thought. This is so good. Yeah, this was a. Uh, this is what he put out, which was clearly written by someone else. Like right when I saw this, you're like, "Oh, this sounds uh, just like uh, he talks." It's signed to whom it may concern. Yeah, right. and uh, very I, real. I guess it's a picture of a cowboy carrying a mic stand off stage. Neo, bro. <laughs> I thought he was it's holding a, signature a, a pan. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. I'm like, is that him? <laughs> is it like the Marlboro man? Ubo? It looks yeah. like a Canva, just one of those generic free like templates you can pick. Yeah, it's yeah, Bradley yeah. Cooper and a star is born. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and he says that he's always been an advocate for, and uh, <laughs> sorry, he's always <laughs> been an advocate for love and, and inclusivity in the LGBTQ plus community and gender identity is nuanced this is a typical response from in company chad so gpt a, chad gpt they're it like is, though, oh our a, celebrity yeah. said something that's mildly offensive to some random group on twitter so it's, it's time not to real. put out the the statement so after that he got like uncanceled but double can so basically it was like people were like hey why are you apologizing for this there's no reason for you to apologize so then he came out and basically doubled down on his first statement well, yeah. First and foremost, I do not apologize for having an opinion on this matter. I am a 43-year-old heterosexual man raising five boys and two girls, okay? That's my reality. Now, if my opinion offended somebody, yeah, sure, I apologize for you being offended because that wasn't my intention. My intention is never to offend anybody. However, I'm entitled to feel how I feel. I'm absolutely entitled to feel how I feel the same way you are entitled to feel how you feel. I ain't asked nobody to follow me. I ain't asked nobody to agree with me. I was asked a question and I answered the damn question. OK, I have no beef with the LBGTQIA plus community whatsoever. I ain't got no beef with y'all. Do whatever the hell it is you want to do. Do what you want to do with your kids. However, somebody asked my opinion on this matter and this is how I feel. I will never be okay with allowing a child to make a decision that detrimental to their life. Oh, it seems to make perfect sense. I love that he dropped how many kids he had just to be like, by the way, I fuck. He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. He was like, just so you know. Seven. Not only am I straight. They're all the original <laughs> races and sexes and, and genders, all right? All the same. 43, but I'm fertile. <laughs> <laughs> I still get it. I'm mm -hmm. Neo. What? Yeah. I like what you guys were saying earlier about like how definitely it was like a PR like that 100%. second one didn't come from him like yeah. 
no, that needs to be said. No, seeing it right away was amazing because, and then watching the pile on because people don't even take a second. You just see like unfollow to watch people turn based on something that just these knee jerk reactions by people. That's exactly what this is supposed to create. I feel like those publicists have like pre written cancellation card like you know how they write obituaries before the person dies yeah. like neo's publishing house just straight had like a neo said something about trans card neo said something about women <laughs> card i don't think it's even yeah. neo yeah, specific yeah i think it's just no. artist blank oh. said something about and then they just put in neo yeah. artist minority boys group to men. yep yeah they try <laughs> They're to, like whatever it is i'm gonna put it in there i want to see the boys the same amount of letters as lgbtq plus <laughs> They're like Jewishly. Is that a <laughs> word? <laughs> that a I want to see the boys to men said something bad about the Jews template. What did they say? <laughs> yeah, no, just it, the reality is, is everybody's going to say something bad, but he didn't. And that's yeah. what I, I think sucks is you speak honestly and then they try to cancel you for something that you spoke honestly about. And then when someone says something hateful, no one takes it seriously. No. Because you're just making these, you're saying that that's transphobic, you're saying that, you know, uh, an, a, an affair is sexual assault, you're like, when you yeah. keep moving the line, everyone starts taking these real things serious, like they stop taking that seriously, so when someone is like a legit racist asshole, right. or when someone does do something terrible to a woman, people are like, oh, is it one of those like neo situations? Where Dilutes blah, 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 blah. the whole thing, Dilutes every everything. Every situation like that, and they, they, those things should be taken seriously. I do agree with that. Like racism should be, yes, called out, right? And and sexism and all that stuff. But when it's real, it real. when it is real, they yeah. flash to you. And I saw. I just was kind of like looking down. <laughs> I, I agree, though. Yeah, racism is real, and it just cuts to the whitest guy like, on the show, <laughs> slowly tweeting, "Racism <laughs> isn't real." Delete, delete, delete. Yeah, like what? How do you guys know my sock account? <laughs> Dave's not racist. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> subliminal, man. It's subliminal. That's true. It's it's all just it, yes. Y these things are an issue. Yeah. But a, a father of five who's taking care of his children is is not an issue. I think the reason that he was like so surprised is because he's a father of five, and he's like, seven. "Whoa, I seven, seven, right? Seven? Oh, I <laughs> five, thought boys. five boys, five boys. Girls. Sorry, girls. two girls. Sorry. Again, Neo Fox. Yeah, yes. he does. I can always forget about the girls. So he's way too busy, bro. Yeah, he's sorry. way too busy Texas. to even pay attention. I just don't see them as people. <laughs> yeah. Get the template out. Yeah. Get the template out. I just use their bonus holes for my pleasure. <laughs> Which ones are the bonus? <laughs> Which I think no, they actually no. did. You hear that recently? Bonus holes. <laughs> no. no, because of the trans community, they wanted to start calling vaginas bonus holes, no. so they Which could go. I don't understand. This was not a joke. Oh, that's I thought. Bonus. I thought I was legitimately about to compliment your writing. Yeah, I was like that's the funniest thing I've ever. Heard. <laughs> it, was, it was real. <laughs> bonus, bonus holes. Look, ladies, that sounds like a David Tell joke. That it is does. the yeah. only hole. That's the that is the hole. So that yeah, everything because, else is bonus. Well, see, because yeah. we have two holes and they have the bonus hole. Whoa. So then when you go to a gynecologist and they're like, I need to have my bonus hole looked at. And they're like, well, this is another waste of 40 minutes of my day. <laughs> no offense to anybody. I guess. Apology. I guess. Like, I don't know how it's to Apology work. coming from uh, the normal world account. <laughs> Who's that, clearly yeah, kidding. That is great. Well, actually, I'm not they kidding. Are. That's absurd. Yeah. Speaking of bonus holes, Magic Spoon. Yep. Oh, hey, yeah. Hey, we got our first... Our first sponsor, bro. Somebody actually, what first and last? <laughs> so, uh, you guys, you you guys remember cereal? Yes, I do. I do. As you can, as too you can sugary tell, for me, friend. I loved, I loved cereal as a kid and as an adult. As you can see, I ate a lot of it. Then but I you're losing eating. weight though. I'm dropping, you know, some. You know, some people would say not enough, but hey, every every step we take, every move we make, it's closer to Magic Spoon. You can get a variety pack of four flavors: Coca, Fruity. Frosted, peanut butter. Where's the lower, lower third right there? Look at that. Magicspoon.com slash normal world. Yeah, they sent us some of this, and I'm not kidding. I've actually lost a few pounds in the last week and a half because I've been trying not to eat crap. Bro, it's delicious. I, yeah, seriously, the peanut butter is awesome. You guys should check it out. Um, this doesn't come in the variety pack. You can get the variety pack, and it has, like, multiple flavors, but this is my favorite flavor, and it's the cinnamon roll. It's actually, like, if you pop it open, this is my personal box. Smells like cinnamon rolls. I don't know how they do it. It's magic. Literally magic. Uh, it's got four how, four grams of net carbs. So if you're if you're trying to if you're trying to you know lose a little weight, watching your carbs. I'm gonna go with one of these boxes here. Uh, let's see what this one right here. Protein, twelve grams. Net carbs, four. No sugar. Zero. It's keto friendly. Zero sugar. Gluten free, grain free, and soy free. Dude, so much in here. 
Are we not forgetting anything? Uh, well, the variety pack has four flavors, or cocoa, fruity, right. frosted, and peanut butter. The pack has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four to five net grams of carbs. Only 140 calories a serving. It's high protein, has zero grams of sugar, keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free. So uh, just go to magicspoon.com slash normal to grab a variety pack and try it today. I asked for this sponsor. And be sure to use our promo code did. normal at checkout to save $5 off your order. Seriously, though, it is really good. Give it a try. There's happiness guaranteed. And honestly, I used to eat spoonfuls of peanut butter like a pig. It's not so safe. when I tell you the peanut butter is good, I'm serious. Is good. Wait, Remember, bring, that, your... bring that thing back up. Yes. Bring it back up. I want to see it. it. Pull it. Remember, get your uh, next delicious bowl of high-protein cereal at magicspoon.com slash normal and use the code normal to save $5 off. High-protein cereal to power your days. Magic Spoon. Or your Daves. Or your Daves, yeah. Thank you, Magic Spoon. Thank you, Magic Spoon. Dave, you, le legit. Losing some... Oh, it's actually good. Yeah, I've actually lost a, couple of weight, a little bit of weight. I'm working on it. And that stuff helps because I, I used to eat cereal as a young boy. I found that doing like the low-carb is the best way, at least for me. Because that is my thing. I, my thing is not sweets. It's not cakes. Same. It's freaking starches. Yeah. It's like the potatoes and the rice and noodles. If I do low carb, that I lose more weight. Than I enjoy a good starch cake combo. Bro. Like a cake made out of potatoes. <sighs> Love potato cake pancakes. You ever have potato pancakes? No, what? You've never had a potato pancake? Oh, oh friend. Oh. Delightful. Don't Toss tell me. Why did you tell cream me about on this there? Oh. So good. Oh. Yeah. Diet's ruined. Don't eat any of that. I know, but it's so good. Dude, it sounds so good. Yeah, I'll take you to a Polish place in Detroit in Hamtramck. We can have duck blood soup. Anthony Bourdain had it, and I was watching him on the show, and I was yeah. like, that's a crazy meal to you? I had that all my life, sir. <laughs> really? Duck blood soup. I, I, one of us don't hurt ourselves. I, I'm Hawaiian, and uh, <laughs> we used to... Uh, my mom used to make us ramen because we were super poor and she'd make the ramen with like spam. And yeah, I thought right. this yeah. was oh, normal food. And so, but she called in Hawaii, they call uh, ramen Simon. So she was like, oh, I'm making Simon. And she'd make it look like fancy, like she'd chop yeah. up green onions and, and stuff like that. And so then I'd hear these comedians in like the 90s be like, ah, oh, poor people always eating ramen. I'm like, yeah, stupid poor people. I'm eating my Hawaiian delicacy <laughs> Simon with golden pork loin spam and not realizing I'm just super poor. Hawaiians love the spam. So why, why is that? Like, cause it it's not good unless was, you fry it. Unless you fry it, I think it's the only way. That's the only way. I went to a tiki bar in Vegas and they had these spam authentic Hawaiian. Uh, yeah, it was good. <laughs> they had the spam uh, sushi. That it was like spam on the top. Yeah, and there's a big sushi like rice at the bottom. Spam. All the things yeah. I said not to eat. I ate that. Yeah, sure. and it was actually pretty good. It was super salty though. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that what it after. is. It's literally just like salty. Well, it was over there because um, like there were a ton of like military bases and it was just canned. Uh, um, it's like. But then they fry it up and yeah, it's I've only had it fried. There's no other way to eat it. But they put it in everything. It's like spam and eggs, spam and rice, spam. Yeah. And oh, it's one like, of the grossest meats. I think it's yes. like that kind of cooked ham. If you've been to the deli. I used to weird work as I hate ham. I think it's my Hawaiian blood that's spam. I'm like, that's acceptable. Bro, Dude, gross. I was vegan and I ate spam. Because okay. I was like, what? my people. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't deny. I can't. Like, <laughs> what about honey baked ham? No, okay, so there's a difference. So when you're in the deli and yeah. you go and you say, I want cooked ham, they're not giving you literally cooked ham. They're giving you this gelatinous, literally jelly-filled ham substance. Yeah. And it's a massive block, and you got to take it, and it's like... Sounds just like that, and yeah. you cut it. <laughs> that sounds like a bonus hole. Freak that yeah, ordered it. Bonus hole. It's a bonus. So hole. like all the holes. It's like yeah. spam, but worse. You fine. can you can make your own hole. <laughs> you can, it's, it's great. They usually come with holes. Yeah. Oh, I see. It. I don't. Uh, that's not the kind of ham I buy. Right. You're, th you're thinking real ham. <laughs> no, I'm thinking a good ham. Yeah, like an actual know. ham that came off a of a pig. That's a delightful ham. But you, have you ever fried bologna? I used to do no, that. Yeah, you fry anything. <laughs> bologna. Anything it, fried is better. It makes you feel better, though. You have a little fried bologna. Oh, toast up the bread. You can make garbage into something yeah, just yeah. delightful. Yep. I used to take, like, the, the tortillas that you'd buy in, like, bulk. Yeah. And then put just, like, American sliced cheese, just the grossest processed oh, cheese. No, I did this, and too. And then you, then you roll it up. 
Yeah. Put it, pop it in the microwave for like a minute. It's a little. Bro, I, you cut it and it looks like little hors d'oeuvres. I, but it, because. <laughs> Serve it yourself. Little, little poor hors, hors d'oeuvres. Because we, poor man. we were so gross, like me and you, we didn't realize. <laughs> Including. It, when my parents came home, because I did the same thing, and my parents came home at every time, they were just like, what is that what smell? Is that? Because you're just microwaving American It's just disgusting. To the so whole gross. House. And so fake gross. tortillas, because the tortillas aren't real tortillas. <laughs> right, They've been sitting in this like. Like vacuum sealed thing. Oh. You came from a big family. You said yeah. I came from a family, like a family of eight. Okay, yeah, I was all boys. Kids. So it was just a riot house all the time, bro. When I think about, we were talking about this before. When I remember just being a teenager, just being like, my parents are horrible. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't get. And then you grow up and you hit like probably right around thirty, where you're like, oh, I was the problem. Yeah. Like I ruined them. Yeah. Like my mom used to. Take us from New Jersey to Hawaii by herself. And we were bad kids. Like, we weren't good kids. We were so bad. This one dude on the airplane with us um, must have found our address from the luggage. And he started, like, sending us death threats. Damn. Like, yeah. And so my mom just, she should win a note. Was it the pilot? <laughs> He's like, I'm taking this sucker down. <laughs> yeah. He keeps calling it Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> I have to kill him. What is that? Right, right, is that like 16 the, hours or something? It's the right way. It's the right I'm way sorry. To colonizer. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very long. Damn skippy. <laughs> no, I'm Irish and Italian. We just, we don't think we colonized was a part of New York. <laughs> and then we got to Detroit and just were poor and then joined the mobs. Or the police force, which one in the same back <laughs> yeah. then. Nice. Anyway, so, sorry. Go really inclusion. I <laughs> jumping around. <laughs> So you went on eight kids on a plane back then? Five, yeah. Five? You yeah, five. You're thinking of Neo. I know. Uh, well, yeah. you had, yeah, with the two parents, you have a seven-person family, though. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was insane. But I was also, I'm the oldest. Hey, bro, right but, here. But we're, okay, so were you also, but because I was, like, the artist, I was also the screw-up. So I had, like, oldest kid baggage, but I mm. wasn't, like, the model old. Like, And I feel like I also had, like, youngest kid. Like, so in order... Of my siblings, you can tell my parents just got better because I dropped out of high school. Then the next oldest, she dropped out of high school, but got her GED, which I didn't. Then okay. got her master's. Next one was the first one to go to a university. Fourth one went to an Ivy League, but Dang. technically dropped out. Okay, and then the getting there though. And then the youngest went to Harvard. Dude, wow! Yeah. They definitely got better as they went. Like, yeah, I, I experienced that, that too. That was a I domino was just, effect <laughs> in the opposite direction. Yeah, they were like, "Hey, you can go out," and then you mess up, and they're like, "Okay, don't do that." I don't do. Yeah, yeah. They have the just the Jamie list of just crossing yeah. things out, and then every sibling got better. Um, I, I think you should be proud of that. That's you know that's why, like the I things that I do way. wrong. Yeah, the things that I do wrong, they can like learn from me. That's good. Be like, okay, don't do that. That's, that's good. Probably that's not good. a good idea. But dude, don't have kids at like eighteen. It's no. good to have. That's your place in the world. It's like you don't want to. You want to live like this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> do that. I've been thinking about it. Where like <laughs> I feel like anyone who had brothers uh, should twin. should be dead. Like yeah. the stuff we used to just call games. Yeah, like, do, do you guys ever throwing, go to the pool? throwing shoes at each other's nutsack just cause? That's it. The oh, pro yeah. wrestling, we would just like power bomb each other, not knowing yep. how pro wrestling actually worked. And you're yeah. like, yeah, just it'll be fine. You just hit the floor. Yeah, we watched it. It was time. real. Yeah. Yes. Oh, a hundred percent. Your at home wrestling was very real. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, the stuff they did still hurt, but you just did the actual moves. That's it. Yeah. yeah I mean, I did backyard wrestling, and we thought we were going to send a VHS a VHS tape to Vince McMahon. <laughs> I took a chair shot from like a rusty, heavy step stool that was so bad, I had to get thirteen stitches. Uh, or sorry, staples uh, in my head and probably some kind of like head hepatitis. Um, but did you get the job? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm making my debut on Monday Night Raw oh, this no. week. Last Thursday. It was, uh, but it, or we would just like go to the pool and just literally try to drown each other. Right. That's yeah, I would ride my bike into ditches to get hurt. Right. Specifically to be like how, because that I was growing up during the jackass era. Yep. So a lot of that just kind of like by osmosis was just like, it was Let's jackass, go get hurt it was and Stone Cold Crazy Boston. Stuff. It was all that stuff. Yeah. There's no cameras around. No. I wasn't recording it. No. I was just getting hurt for no reason. You were doing it for the art, bro. For the art. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I feel like half of our games, like they weren't even kid. They were like gang initiations. Yeah. Like, you would just put sleeping bags on one of the brothers and then just turn off the lights. That's so what we did with cousins. Yeah. So I have a twin brother, but you would just start hurting the, hurting. the weakest one. <laughs> and then laugh. Yeah. 
I do you remember they if they started to cry? I hope this wasn't just a me thing, or else I'm gonna. This isn't. Gonna sound <laughs> oh no, like it a, wasn't just you. When uh, they'd start crying, you'd have to like cover their mouth so your parents would hear. And you're just like, shut up, you're fine, you're fine. I, can't you're fine. That I did that. Like, they're it's massive okay. pain, and you're just like, you're like, look, we're on the same team, man. Yeah, it's yeah, me yeah. and you. It's against against them. Them. Yeah. Yeah, if they come downstairs, we're never gonna be able to do this again. Yes. And then meanwhile, Stop like crying. he bit me, he bit my palm. <laughs> <laughs> and daughters are having tea parties and we wonder why like we don't know how to share our feelings and yeah. be vulnerable and yeah. they like go to therapy and are fine yeah girl because I, I have two boys and two girls okay. so the, the difference between boys and girls is so vast it's, it's like they're just like oh let's go play bar me and sit down and and have a tea party talk and then the boys are like flipping over and throwing pillows at each other and <laughs> climbing over fences and getting lost and i'm like okay i remember being me and like what you said yeah you think about it and you go, oh, yeah, okay. I, I respect my parents way more than I did already because of what they had to deal with. So what's your move, though? As a Because I, I think about this if I want kids. Like, when you see, like, you getting, I was going to say getting stuck on fences. I just had a memory of I climbed a fence. We were sneaking to a graveyard. I got stuck. Nice. All my other friends bailed. And I just sat there until the sun went down waiting for my dad <laughs> to come up because my jeans were caught on, like, the top. Oof. Um, but oh, you like, sat hanging? Yeah, dude. <laughs> in, a, okay. in a graveyard. In a graveyard. That's fence. a fun night. That's an awesome story. <laughs> it was so bad. Um, but when you see your kids, like the boys, when you see them like going off into the woods or coming home late or like going on adventures and you're terrified and they didn't come home and you said, is there a part of you that's like, but that's why I'm creative and I get to I have a dope life? Yeah. Or do you have to be like, no, I have to say no and then hopefully they'll still be creative and cool like what's the balance a little bit of me makes me think like did my parents not care about me <laughs> like, why do they let me out so late and so for so much time Dude, i would disappear uh, but yeah, for I, like I, I think i gotta like learn yeah. that because my my son's start turning 12 or he's turning 13 this year okay that's gonna be a big Sorry. age next year that's, yeah, yeah, yeah that's like from being a child to being a, a teen and i've got to like okay that's my job as a dad is to be like you go do things that are scary yeah the mom's gonna be like don't don't ever leave the house be safe don't don't ever be dangerous and right. i gotta do you gotta cool opposite. you gotta cool dad it a little bit yeah right so i gotta be like go do things go learn and, and explore and get hurt and stuff so right yeah, it's a balance between those two things yeah you don't want a full helicopter especially into yeah, the into the teens no well because yeah. we see what happened with that like generation like i think one of the reasons that we're the way we are is like parents in the 90s like it was just yeah. lawless i feel like um I don't, I don't know if anyone will get this analogy or if it's just for me, but I feel like uh, uh, parenting in the 90s was, was like what UFC used to be. Like now it's on Sports Center and it's like a good, like normal sport. But like back in the day, <laughs> it was illegal in most states. There were no rules. There weren't weight classes. People were like, I mean. You can go below the belt. You can pop people in the it nose. It was yeah, when lawless. Late 80s, early 90s, it was more like ECW because it was like, <laughs> look. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's that, like, what do you guys want to do today? And your one friend's like this and yeah, you didn't know it was a felony. But sure, everybody's like, yeah, we should do that. Well, but Ray Dudley just called me the F word. I remember one time we went, we were all like six. We stole all the mail in the neighborhood <laughs> just because yes. we thought that was a good idea. That's hilarious. And then we were dumping so gasoline on it because everybody just had lighters back then. Any yeah. parent. Oh, yeah. A lot yeah. Of, yeah. And they weren't child the safety backyard. lighters. They were child friendly. Yeah. And My mom somehow had lighters but still lit her cigarettes on the stove. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was like the worst of everything. Well, they were all chain smokers. It just was whatever was close by and had a flame. <laughs> yeah. You know what's most efficient? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just sit leaning into a bug zapper. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like that's that's what we would do. And I remember like my friend's mom came out and like we're just about to light all the mail in the neighborhood up. <laughs> She's like, what are you guys? Do? Oh, no. And she was like a friendly mom. Sure. Yeah. My mom, you know, she hurt us for that one. <laughs> and so did my friend Jimmy's mom. Like that was, we we were the spoon and belt house. Oh, his mom was like the, his mom was more like you, had the kids young. So it was like, I'm doing my best too. Yeah, I can't really tell it. you I'm also, not ready for this. I had my, my mom tell the cops, lie to the cops for me. I, I threw, we were, it was 4th of July and we, they just had the whole burn ban where you couldn't fire fireworks anymore. And we were in the city limits, but we were still doing it. Of we were throwing, we were in our backyard throwing uh, M80s over the fence. And then we just hear, hey, knock, 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 knock on our door. It was a police officer. He pulled around the side and we threw M80s right onto him and onto his car, unknowingly. We're geniuses. <laughs> 
open the door. He, the dude, my friend freaks out because my friend is like, a, he's a homeschool kid. He's a Christian homeschool kid. So he's like freaking out about getting mad, like getting in trouble. Open the door. Cop is like, clearly sees that there's no parents here. He goes, where's your mom? Where's your dad? I go, oh, they just went out and do whatever. Can you call him? He calls him. Mom gets on. I don't talk to my mom. I'm just like right to the cop. She covers for me. And she goes, I did not know that they were at home. She totally knew. I did not know that they had fireworks. She totally knew. And she was like, I will. I will. They are grounded. They are grounded. And he goes, all right. And he gives the phone back. And he goes, okay, well, you're getting in trouble now. Just don't ever do it again. And then he leaves. And I was like, thank God, Mom. Incredible. Thank you. Well, you saved have, me. You have to think that our parents, <laughs> if our parents are like us, you have to think that behind closed doors, like at, like you're stuck up for you, but like the male thing, how the parents didn't get together after being like, you guys, if you ever do that again, blah, blah, blah. And then you go upstairs and then they're like, yo, they chose to get all the mail from the net. That's pretty fucking funny. right. Like how can they not low key whisper? Like that's hysterical. Our kids are maniacs. Of course. Well, yeah. like I was at a movie, by the way, it is funny though. When you do find out at a friend's house, like you're not allowed to have suburban fires. All. <laughs> I've been in that issue just a few times. Always funny when they're coming oh. in the backyard. Like, look, I ignored it at first, but I don't know how much stuff you guys are going to put in there. <laughs> I don't know how big this yeah, on fire is going to get. circling the block. Could you stop it? <laughs> so, but no, yeah, it's like uh, my son, we were at, we were going to see the Mario movie. Right. I've talked about it on stage, but I, he got Reese's peanut butter cups and his yeah. friend goes, I'm allergic to nuts. And he goes, you allergic to these nuts? <laughs> <laughs> and my son just turned eight, and my response was seriously, <laughs> uh, "Hey, yeah, hey!" <laughs> and then, like in my head, I'm like, "Wow, it was a good timing, man!" Like I can't, I, and you, but there are stuff that they do where they will like say something or a plan they came up with, yeah, or yeah. something that even if it's like I guess deviant by a kid's standard, you're like. Wow, that was well thought out. I'm just glad yeah. that they worked Dude, together as a team instead of fighting each my other. My sister just told me, my sister came to visit yesterday and she has two boys and they're super funny and cool. And in, in, in the beginning of their life, she tried, she was like, I'm going to raise them as like vegetarians. And um, so she- So they're gay. So, so, yeah, yeah, they're dealing with that. Uh, so they, <laughs> she went over to like one of his friends, um, to, she went to like pick him up from a friend's house and uh she she was like the the mom offered to give her like a like a venison to go like the dad was like a hunter or whatever okay and she goes oh he doesn't you know he doesn't eat that he doesn't he doesn't eat meat and the mom goes what do you mean <laughs> and apparently for years he was just going to that house and eating what they just called meat sandwiches. So like he just found a way. Like there was a kid in my neighborhood growing. <laughs> he figured it out. Yeah, he figured it out. And so he was just going. He like he may not even like this kid. He may have just befriended the weird kid to just get meat meats, sandwiches. Man. I mean, I did that when I found out the weird kid in my like sixth grade class. His dad had Playboys and they were out in the bathroom. I was like, I'm friends with Jason now, and I would just go to Jason's house, and they must have thought I was like ill because I would just sit in the bathroom and read Playboys and then have my mom pick me up. Like, like are you okay, Jamie? Yeah. I'm like, I'm better than I'm, I'm alive. Turn yeah, the yeah. fan on. That means you're not supposed to knock. I've never felt privacy. so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so true, though. You have to reward that. Ba I mean, you have to reward the ingenuity while yeah. having to also lay down the law, and I don't know if I could do that as a parent. Yeah, you gotta put that... I like, also old, love the idea, though, face on. of someone else's mom going, he's not a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I promise. <laughs> Got to break it to you. Well, I, I, well, we went to uh, we went to my brother the first time he ever ate meat. We went to my brother's wedding, and it was in Italy. So my sister was like, "Okay, as a treat," because it was like a, a like fancy meat. And he literally, this kid, and I, again, I was vegan for fifteen years. Like, he takes a bite. Also gay for 15 years. I'm fine now. Yeah, um, he, that was implied. He takes that great. He takes a bite, and this little kid. I mean, he must have been like six or whatever. He just goes meat, meat, and I swear he starts running around this Italian restaurant just screaming meat for all. And I was just like, this, uh, this makes my 15 years of being just beautiful moment. Worth. It was a beautiful moment. Yeah. It's what a, would you do, Jamie, if your son was Wayne Brady and he said that he was pansexual? God, I'm so glad you asked me that. Um, I mean, I'd say let's find out. Let's find out. So I, I heard about that today. Yeah. Ken told me. Very sad. Wayne Brady. Uh, he decided to come out as a thing that was made up like two weeks ago. Hold on. No, no, no. It wasn't made up two weeks ago because 
most of the time, I can remember this, especially in my liberal days. Um, I've had this for longer than two weeks? Any girl, yes, for years. Any girl way hotter than me that I slept with uh, claimed to be pansexual. Uh, and, and that was like, because is it, wait, hold on. Am I thinking of the right one? Is pansexual the one where they're attracted to intellect? Guys, listen. Oh, pan's there like anything. Is, guys, guys. Oh, then I'm on the spectrum. Oh, listen, there's nothing wrong with being pansexual, okay? I'm just going to say it. I'm not saying it's the best thing, but there's just sometimes there's nothing. Maybe we shouldn't jump the gun on Wayne Brady, okay? okay? Yeah, and don't forget to get stuff on my Amazon wish list. That's really important to me. So if you could just go ahead and do that, you can go ahead and click oh, some hey, sh- hey. Oh, 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 hey. Uh, did you hear that Wayne Brady came out as pansexual? Oh, huh. what a loser. <laughs> I know, right? right? <laughs> Thank God they didn't find you, baby. <laughs> yeah, so if you go to, like, my Peter Pans at OnlyFans, um, just, you know, if you want to throw me a couple bucks, I do weird stuff. With a Z. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not the not the, the fairy guy. No, no, no. This stuff's totally cool. Above board. Yeah. Yeah. It's hot. Super hot. Yeah, it's really, it's a real, it's, it's not a sticky situation because I use Pam. <laughs> <laughs> you can get non-stick. Yeah, I do use it. It is nonstick. You have like a film on there. It slides know. right off. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Brady tied his sexuality to Robin Williams, saying uh, Robin Williams' death in 2014 really impacted me and set me on the path to self-discovery, notability. Uh, uh, notably, sorry, I said notability. <laughs> notably, Brady said. <laughs> well, well, is that, well, that's is that a real quote? <laughs> yes. It was you know Robin. Williams. Robin was like a very close friend of mine. I was gonna say that's why I wanted to bring it up because I, I know you know Robin Williams. Why would you use the phrase "tied to"? That's I, probably, I that's can certainly say when he <laughs> when he died, uh, I was definitely like too busy crying to be like, "Who can I fuck out of this?" Do you <laughs> right. think that's how Wayne Brady? Sc- Do you think when someone turns <laughs> him down, <laughs> <about> yourself, <laughs> so yeah. Much? yeah, like would you, when someone turns down Wayne Brady, do you think he's like, well, obviously you don't care about the death of beloved comedian Robin Williams. <laughs> yeah, is this? If, do you respect Robin Williams? Because if you did, you would respect my pansexuality, which I discovered in the wake of the tragic <laughs> suicide <weird>. of, <laughs> of Robin Williams, who nobody expected to do that unless you may have known him personally. Wow. Yeah, and you look at that and go, and then, but then you have that good moment where you want to realize something about yourself, and it's just like, I want to put my penis in everything. <laughs> you know how I'm limiting myself? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he... Life is short, like... and there's so much <laughs> stuff to put my penis in. He got the wrong message from Mrs. Doubtfire. What yeah. an insane thing to say. Like, also, when he's thinking about coming out, the idea that he's like, okay, people might be a little weird about me coming out as pansexual. How can I make this not as weird? Remember Robin Williams? Everybody loves yeah. Robin Everyone Williams. loves Robin. Yeah. Everyone was really sad when he died. But yeah. what if the world got something good out of it? Like Wayne Brady's dick. That's <laughs> insane. Yeah. Like, yeah. That is literally insane. And I do mean everybody. <laughs> right? Because you can all have a little bit because that's what it means. Yeah. Everybody. Where's the piano? Here's a song. And one. Like, yeah. it's... Jeez. He said he was bisexual with an open mind. I was like, what? That's the same thing. I never thought someone could make short form form improv like more aggravating to me. And now <laughs> I'm Somehow. so mad right now. It's just so odd to me because why do you, why do you need attention? You have a great show. Uh, well, not a great show. You're very talented. Yeah, he's, he's a very, very oh, dude, he's sing. massively talented. He's incredibly talented. Massively talented. Yeah. He's doing like daytime hosting. He does The Price is the Right, price but is the right. one with costumes. Yeah. Whatever uh, it's called. I did not know about this. Yeah. Well, you don't know about his show? Oh. Big money. It's called, oh, it's huge money. It took pansexual for me to know that he had a show. It's because Drew Carey does. That's and, right. Drew, and that's why he did it. Thing. That's exactly why he did it. It's no, like a. It's an old show that's brought back. You can look it up, I'm sure. It's a. It it comes on that. before Price is Right. Okay. So better? Um, no. No, 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 no. No way. Don't uh, you dare okay. say better than Price is Right. Sorry. There's no better show. Let's make a deal. Let's make okay. a deal. Let's make a deal. Okay, yeah. And right. everybody's in costumes, and, and the deal is it's himself fun. with <laughs> anybody. What he'll have said. <laughs> <laughs> the deal is backstage. Deal. Does pansexual just mean, like, I'm really horny and have low standard? Like, what is the... Ac- I don't want to be insulting. What is the actual definition? Attracted to anything. Okay. And anything. it could be anything. So again, you you just give me that chair. You're just down to pansexuality means, guys, for the last time. (laughs) Sorry, I didn't mean to. (laughs) 
if you happen to enjoy the company <laughs> of the pans and you are ready to come out of the kitchen. Plug that site again. One yes, more time. it's only, only pans. pans. Z. <laughs> Peter, Peter Pans at Only Pans. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to speak your truth. No, oh. I just, you know, people don't really get me. And I think Wayne coming out sort of undermines our movement. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's important that, you know, we have our movement because we only have sex with pans and he has sex with whatevs. And you figured this out when Norm MacDonald died, correct? Correct. When Norm passed away, I was like, you know what? <laughs> I would like to put the handle of a pan in my ass. <laughs> <laughs> any pan. Yeah, any pan. Any one of them. What about I was a like, pot, a huh. pan. How do you feel about pots? Yeah. Uh, uh, Is pot, that included? Or? I mean, pots are, they're just fat pans. <laughs> So you don't, so you're not into the bigger. When, when John Penn <laughs> died. You have to make that <laughs> joke. <laughs> oh. Loud and clear. Yeah. Uh. I like to put two pots together sometimes and pretend it's a big old pot booty. <laughs> it's a big old gumbo. Just go in the middle. <laughs> Make a hot dog. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, you can. It's pretty. Yeah, it's nice. You know, you can cook a call cook in a hot boil in a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, you're the host of a of a new show, new podcast. It's about Jesus. I don't know how to segue. Seamless segue right transition. to it. Oh. I think we need it. I think we need it right now because yeah, of what he just said. You know what? I think Wayne Brady could use some Jesus. So why don't we talk <laughs> about? What you, you've said. Uh, I have a new podcast. It's called The Back Row with Jamie Kilstein. Uh, you can check it out at backrowpod.com. And uh, yeah, it's about me being like a, a screw up. Um, and, and I've made a lot of mistakes and I've dealt with a lot of like mental health issues. Um, and I, uh, I found Jesus, but it's certainly not the... It's not like a shamey Christian show where, cause I, I, I did that on the left, right? I was like, if you don't agree with me, yeah. you're wrong. And Christianity, the church I found, the, 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 the Christians that I've kind of like, um, met have been so wonderful and kind. And I only thought Christians like my idea of, of Jesus was like the Bush administration. Uh, and I was just like, well, I don't, uh, I don't like that. And so I never really read about Jesus. Um, and so when I started reading about like him and he was just, you know, hanging out with poor people, Jesus is rad. Workers, Jesus rules. Yeah. And so it really helped me, but knowing all of the things that kept me away from Christianity is kind of why I want to do this podcast. So like I'll interview pastors and stuff, but we'll talk about porn or doing drugs. And like, I curse and people still get weird about that in the Christian space. Yeah. And, and when they do, when they do get weird about it or when they do get, you know, homophobic or, or whatever, you just kind of go, Oh, this is what kept people like me away. And for me, it's been so good when it comes to like mental health and addiction and all this stuff that I'm like, all right, well maybe if I'm just, honest. And I'm like, Hey, I'm a Christian. I'm still going to make fun of Christianity. I'm still going to curse. I'm still going to screw up all the time and talk about it. It could make, it'll get more people to kind of be open to it or be open to God or higher power or, or whatever you want to call it. So that's kind of the goal of the show. It's a mental health show. It's a comedy show. Um, but it started from, I was like, Oh, I like Jesus. I don't love all Jesus people. Yeah. So maybe I can say I love Jesus for a whole new group that doesn't feel represented at all or who that mm -hmm. don't go to church or or anything like that. I think that was that's what puts people off of it so much is the are the people that follow Jesus that are fallible, that yeah. are full of sin, that mess up and they they go I hate Christianity because of that and well, you're like that's, that's not even Jesus that's you're not thing. even talking about Christianity Jesus should be points. the least judgy because they're like hey we all screwed up so bad we needed that dude to die right in order for us just to, so to to be okay um and so when you when you meet these like pretentious ones where it's like dude you complain about me cursing you're telling me you don't gossip you're 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 saying that gay guy's gonna go to hell did you wait till marriage to have sex like when we can all admit that we're all screw ups and we're all hypocrites then we can actually start to get better together but when you're putting on this like front yeah. which I've done when you're putting on this front that like you're infallible or you have all the answers. Um, no one's going to want to listen to you. I got super lucky that the church I went to in Austin, they open up every sermon by being like, Hey, we're all messed up. They're like, don't listen to us. Like us, the pastors, like we're messed up too. We're going to tell you about Jesus. He's cool. But like, you know, any church that says they're not filled with broken people, like 
that's they're wrong. lying. Well, then, yeah, then you have a Hillsdale it's, documentary. Yeah, but exactly. I mean, but, but a Hulu credit on your resume. That's true. <laughs> See, the comedian's always thinking. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. No, it's true. I mean, finding finding God and finding Jesus was definitely a big part of sobriety. And I mean, plus I had been in the church, and you kind of go away from it, and you kind of go mm -hmm. back. And, yeah, you know, you, people have their struggles, and I stayed away from. Even AA, I was so against anything with God language that I stayed away from AA. Well, atheism even they said higher it, power. Or yeah, whatever. no, no. And I think a lot of comics are like that too. And I think atheism, some people firmly believe it. You know, you, you have people out there, but I mean, at the same time, it is a religion in and of itself to a lot of people. When you're spending that much time, when you have like, because I, you when know, you're a contrarian deliberately, I, yeah, yeah, yeah it's like become I, your being. I opened for Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens back in the day, and it's like Hitchens was actually kind of fun. Um, but if you yeah, kind of act like there's no God. It's like, well, then why are you spending your entire career talking about it? But again, yeah, like right. when I was an atheist. Because yeah, you're angry at God. Yeah. And, and that's I, what you don't want to project or admit. Yes. And then and when I realized that, my pastor talked about that this week, like a lot of the things that we're angry about, we're angry at people. Like people start wars. People are broken. People right. are whatever. But I can tell you, like, since I came to God, I've never felt. In a weird way, it's it's actually made me more confident than I've ever been because I was like, oh, this is what love feels like. This is what forgiveness actually feels like. This isn't you tweet a wrong thing and you lose all your friends. Yeah. Like this is just to, to feel unconditionally loved suddenly makes you want to be a better person because what I didn't want to be is like you see the guys who like – you know, they have an affair and then 20 years later, they're like, I wrote a book called Finding Hope and it's like them holding hands with Jesus. And like, I was like, oh, I don't want to be that dude. Yeah. But then I just kind of found God on my own just because I had really cool friends in Texas who happened to be Christian. And I was like, oh, well, I like Tim Kennedy. Like, I like him as a, a guy. Mm -hmm. And I like, you know, like me and Glenn talked about it on his show. I'm like, I like him as a guy. And, and so all these like people I kind of like looked up to had a Jesus thing and they never pushed it on me. And so then I just, yeah, I just started reading again about Jesus, yeah. not looking at, you know, I, I wasn't like, how do I be more like Mike Pence? I just, I was like, no, no, no. How, if you just try to be <laughs> more like Jesus in general, you're not going to go wrong. Like there's nothing. If that's your, bad, if that's your bad, like dude, North Star. That's it. You're going towards that. That's what I'm always trying to go towards is being like that. Yeah. I think you're. Yeah. You're be more inspired. loving, show more grace. Like, dude, when I was a liberal, I literally had asked my pastor because I knew the word forgiveness. I knew the word love. I literally didn't know what the word grace meant because yeah. that just didn't exist in my world. Like, I didn't hear that until I started going to church. And, you know, another reason I started the podcast is when I started going to church, I even started having imposter syndrome with God. Mm. Like, I was like, oh man, I'm not good enough for this. Like, like, dude, I got together with my pastor and was like, you know, I had an affair and it was kind of public. Like, do you still want me here? And he's like, you know, Jesus, there were people, heroes in the Bible were like murderers. All of them, They're dude. Like, Your affair is them. fine, bro. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but the, but the guilt and the shame, like if it can even take you, and I've, I've had so many Christians write me, pastors, that they're like, we're not allowed to talk about mental health because we have to kind of seem infallible and perfect. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. well then I'll be the dude. I'll, I'll be the screw up. I don't care. I'll be the guy that talks about mental health so that even Christians who have been Christian forever, they can still come to my show and be like, okay, that dude curses, that dude's depressed, that guy, like I'm not, God doesn't hate, I'm not the only one. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that's the spot that I think a lot of people are where they, they are so afraid of being called a sinner, but like we t we always say, we're all sinners. Yeah. Like we are all bad. At least I'm being honest about it. And I'm like trying to be better. Yeah. Well, I think we talked about point. that. You have to lead with the problems with what you have. I mean, that's yeah. why, you know, it's like the Eminem scene in Eight Mile. Yes. I mean, you know, yes. yeah. in Eight Mile where he's uh, in the rap battle and he just talks about himself. I mean, you have to be honest. If you own everything that's happened to you yep. and you're just. I'm the pansexual of sinners. Like we, yes. uh, I've done them all. We've all done them. Uh, I think I've done them all, but murder, murder, and adultery. Other than, I mean, I guess there's probably some version of well, that. If you've done one, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. Side of all like dating. The same. You guys want to go murder someone, bro? Again, I, I was just saying that because I figured the feds were watching. This thing. I'm wearing a killer. Gonna watch this late in the shirt. <laughs> The answers were always right there. Well, yeah. the, whole the back of my shirt literally says, save a child, kill a pedo. I'm not even kidding. Oh, I saw it. I saw it on the yeah, way yeah. in, and I was just like, ooh, how are we going to... Not that I would ever condone that completely, 100% oh. in every way. When did the... <laughs> Dude, when I... I, I ne... 
I, when I was liberal, the idea that like now, like my, and I'm, I'm in the middle. I, I'm in the middle. But when I seem a little bit to the right, I'm not going to lie. I'm getting there. Uh, yeah. I, 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 this week. I, I call myself like a, like I'm a bleeding heart centrist. I still have the, the, like the mushy feelings. Yeah. Uh, I don't think empathy is liberal owned anymore. <laughs> that's the problem. Well, that's what I was just, <laughs> yeah. that's what I was just going to say. You know, more. like it's not, I don't, that's, they have no have empathy. Sh- I think that's at all whatsoever. Well, I'm like, why are conservatives the only ones who seem to be against pedophiles? Like yeah, that's such a bizarre fucking, so weird. thing. It's so weird to me. I didn't know that was even like a, an argument. I think there is a, a whole centrist area people. too. And yeah. then there's the extremes. And then it's yeah. like, yeah, the extreme of the liberal yeah. is just, I don't understand when liberal became like I'm completely for government and do everything they tell you. Isn't that wild? They should just they make follow that every word they say. Dude, the, oh, and if they want to change laws to, to make them against you, like speech, we're all for it. I remember, like, I look. I got the I got the vaccine. People asked me to get the vaccine. I got the vaccine. But then I was wondering I, what that loud heartbeat was. <laughs> <laughs> the vein on your neck was. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's my empathy. Uh, I. <laughs> the has got raging. Doctor says it's my courage. <laughs> <laughs> I remember like I was still I would still consider myself liberal when all that stuff happened and I got the vaccine but dude there was part of me that I'm like I thought we were the ones who like went after the pharmaceutical companies and like went after and and, and that's the thing it, it's nowadays you are told what your team believes and then you have to believe that thing yep. and it doesn't matter that they keep pushing and pushing and making it more extreme and more extreme if you don't you're going to get kicked out and I think that the more that happens, I think the louder people in the middle are going to get. And the center right is going to see that they have a lot in common with the center left and they're going to come together. And then ideally we become the sort of like reasonable voice and the How extremes on both be. sides just get like booted because it's yeah. ridiculous. Oh, it's insane. It's, it's gone way too far and it's, it's, it's just annoying at this point. Yeah. Well, even like if you look at Jesus, right, if you read some stuff in the Bible, some of it seems like it's very conservative. Mm-hmm. Some of it seems like it's very liberal, right? You have some of the social justice stuff, hanging out with very hookers. liberal. You have some of the sex stuff, very, yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that again, you just make Jesus your compass, and every decision you make, you kind of just go like, "Well, am I doing this with love? Yeah. Is this helping people? Can I show forgiveness?" Right? Like, what would Jesus do? Oh, we should put that on a shirt. That would be. That's really good. Why not? Can, just can you get the, the kill? Yes. Yeah, that's even better. That's we a, are going to be <laughs> <laughs> money, 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 idea, money, money. On that, but we do have to dismount. But no, I, I think that's a great. I do <laughs> like that. I, I think that that's a great idea for your show. Oh, thanks, yeah, it it's very important that people talk about it and be honest about it because it is harder. And it's very hard in this climate and in this world we live in now to go. Well, can I speak cleanly and without anger and without swearing about something that's so important? Right. Especially when there's so much violence and hatred and stuff in the world, it's yeah. very difficult to just yeah. casually go, "Well, I hope I'm following these A, B's and C's right." Yeah. I just don't have it in me, but I I I have I have I do have my faith. Yeah, and even yeah. like can I talk about mental health without being ostracized or ostracized from my church or can I talk about um, you know, having suicidal ideation without someone using that against me on mm-hmm. Twitter like one day and it's like I just want a show where we can talk yeah. about all that stuff and like feel like hey we're gonna be okay and, like you're not the only ones out there and then we make dick jokes which so is it's awesome. the back row the back row with Jamie oh. Kilstein you can go to backrowpod.com to get like the YouTube link or just go back row podcast on iTunes or Spotify or any of that stuff and you can catch me well first you can get my book how to be more like Mike Pence by Dave Lang <laughs> <laughs> the truth <laughs> Hot off the presses. Yeah, it's a great book. It's a wonderful read. Uh, also, it involves a firm handshake. <laughs> and also, I'll be at Zany's Comedy Club in Rosemont, Illinois, August 18th and 19th. That's me as El Capone. Ooh, you got the syphilis. Yep. Died, me. Died of brain rot. <laughs> just got real stupid and then died. You can find me on Friday Night Tights on Nerd Rotic and on Mondays on the Adam Krigler channel and on my own channel. Whenever I decide to stream, <laughs> which is sporadic. <laughs> so thank you for watching the show. Hey, we passed 60K subscribers on this channel. Subscribe. Subscribe right now. Do it. If you haven't, do it right now. You're all, all the way at the end of the show. You might as well do it. I mean, you've been hanging out this whole time. Be oh, a pal. Yeah. Bro. <laughs>